Okay? You have one of the sections there, it's called Tip of the Tongue, Experiences, or Tots. T-O-T-S. Tip of the Tongue. What is a tip of the tongue? First of all, did you read my comments on the box? You didn't respond. I did not see the video. You changed it. I did not see the command. No. I did not see my boss. So that I can repost it. You are back. When you are finished. When are you going to finish? Because we have, I have one time I want to close. It's part of the next week. Huh? Okay, please. Yes. The tip of the tongue is one type of speech. Yes, one of the examples of speech. Uh, what does it mean to the tongue? It means to It's an experience uh, when a speaker tries to produce uh, what to say something that's say the tongue. Yes, something. Yeah, you see the name. Yeah, let me say something that is of. Yes. When you know something, but you can't tell. What's the other one called? Split of the tongue. And then you have the tip of the tongue. You have it at the tip of your tongue. Have it. We can't say it. Yes. Yes. Can you explain again? It's when you know the word. You want to say a word, but your lemma, your concept. Yes. Yes, you cannot retrieve it, and you cannot articulate. That concept that you have in your mind, again, okay, the phonological manifestation of that concept, you can say you have it at the tip of the, your tongue, but you can't say it. You lose it to some extent. So, what purpose of this? And what way does it serve to help researchers to, to, to make this uh, speech production process and distinguish between two components the conceptual, semantic component, and then the phonological? Phonetic component. In what ways does it serve? It activates. It activates? <laughs> Peter? Uh -huh. So, whatever is supposed to, to produce something, um, uh, his mind with her mind actually has the part which um, called written. So, yes. Yes. Uh, it helps uh, get to the foundation about the concept uh, of. Speech production. Mm -hmm. Yes, it helps in this understanding of the speech production process. In what ways, well, that's good, in what ways, particularly, concretely, does it help in making the researchers believe that there is some kind of research or speech production process? And in this speech production process, there is a conceptual framework and the components, and then the other In what ways does it? This, this kind of errors that are the result of break, breakdowns yeah. in, in, one, in the process. Yes. In the process. Yes, yeah. there's yeah. a breakdown. That's good. Okay. Damage. Damage. Yes. Are you sure? It's a damage. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what's Sometimes, uh, like uh, those inner parts are so uh, uh, yeah. it's, it, uh, it provides evidence for scientists. You go through this process of uh, conceptualization and selecting a uh, yes. uh, words in the mind. Yes, that's right. This is one way it makes researchers when they see somebody having this kind of phenomena or experience on tip of the tongue, the researcher says, yes, this guy knows what he wants to talk about. The first component of the speech for that process, when you have this concept of semantic components, and he, he knows what he wants to talk about the concept, but then the are saying just one part here, that's your part. And then the logical system is not activated yes. in order to, to, to produce. Yes, and that's the, that's the proof to say that there is another component which is called the phonological component or uh, competence, let's call it that way, that helps the speaker to articulate that conceptual 
word or lemma from the lemma into a sounds, into a means, and so on. Scientists say, say that it's not a pen that uh, brought a brick. It's just a temporary. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is one of the very main characteristics of, of this phenomenon, which is that it is uh, not permanent. It happens from time to time, especially in times of. Time pressures, yes, yes. Okay, yes. when there's a kind of time pressure or fatigue or whatever. So there's this process doesn't go through successfully. Okay. Semantic substitution. Uh -huh. Semantic substitution. What do you mean by that? You read something, but maybe tell me more. It's when, for example, uh, people might produce something instead of something else. Like, for example, when you say uh, psychological instead of systematic. That's a slip of the tongue. So you're talking here about the slip of the tongue, okay? You are talking about, you have to make a distinction because I see that two people now, or maybe more, are making this confusion. Slip of the tongue is what I talked about last time in the video tutorial, in which I have referred to this, my experience that happened to me when I was going to, normally I was speaking about psycholinguistic, and then I made a slip of the tongue and I used the word social linguistic because of time pressures, okay? So that's slip of the tongue, okay? So, usually they are referred to as TOT uh, abbreviation, okay? So, tip of the tongue experiences also provide us with evidence about such or speech, normally it's a, a she, uh, okay, speech production, and then TOT states Okay, occur when one has accessed, using the appropriate terminology, okay, as it is used in the book, has accessed the correct lemma, concept, etc. You know what he wants to talk about in other meaning and so on, but he or she is unable to fully activate, don't need to, to write, okay, you will have this, okay, fully activate the phonological information that corresponds to that lemma. <coughs> then, thought experiences are taken as, coming to this uh, a question, last question I asked you, as evidence for the distinction between semantic meaning, because when the speaker has this experience, he has the meaning in mind, he has the concept. I want to talk about this, but he doesn't know how to say it. So, as evidence for the distinction between semantic meaning activation and phonological sound activation that plays a role in all current accounts of speech production. Yes. And that's because when we talked about this labeled model last time, yeah, it's a model, it's a theory, that comes from data. And these people, they do research. I mean, uh, they take informants and do research with them as experiments. Okay, put them under different types of experiments, you have the details in the book, and then they come up with these theories that say, yes, there is a speech production process, and this production process contains the following components, there is a lemma, there is a phonological activation, and so on and so forth. So, this is the main use, or uh, how thoughts are useful for the speech production process. A variety of results point to phonological encoding rather than semantic processes as being the culprit. Because if you think carefully about this thought experience, there is no problem about the semantics. There is no problem about the meaning. There is no problem about the lemma. The problem, where is it? It is in the phonological activation. It happens to you. You, can, okay? you don't know how to say it. Words that we encounter, this is another phenomenon, uh, feature of these uh, thought experiences, is that the researcher found out, when they were doing their experiments with the informants, they found out that the words that we encounter infrequently are more likely to produce thought experiences that than words that we encounter more frequently. That is to say, the words which, to which you are used, you, you use every day, okay? You don't have this kind of problem happening. This is something that we can feel from our intuition as speakers, okay? Usually it happens to those words that we rarely use, 
okay? Or maybe you have used, especially when you are learning English, for example, students, when they learn first year of uh, learning English, they learn some vocabulary. It happens to me as well. I learned lots of vocabulary. But then after this, some of the vocabulary is not used. I rarely use it. And then it happens that when I want to refer back to it and I want to use it, I have a problem to activate it. Okay, it happens to me. It also happens sometimes when, when, when uh, you know a person very well and you can see him for three, four, or five years and then you encounter him. Yeah. You know the face, you almost know the name, but yes. you can't activate it. Activate. Yeah. That's it. So you have the same thing, okay? It's maybe another way or another uh, evidence, yeah. not a tip of the tongue, but it's a ca another kind of evidence that we use for this. Another yeah. quick example that, because it happens to me, but also have to say that it's when you're dealing with like, some medical term. You know. Because in medicine, for example, you know, like a uh, medicament, for example, but you should have given the exact name, even like a plant, which is very similar to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they are like very yeah. similar. It's also just another way of uh, having the same thing. Yes. Uh, rather, depending on the field of the word. Okay, the feel of the words, okay, it depends to medication or yeah. whatever. You say yeah. But we can, yeah. we, can, we can all do those kinds of things, this one, this one, and all other types of tips of the tongue, so we can put them in this way. Because the only common thing between all of them is that they are infrequent. Yeah. Okay, if they are frequent for you, even medication, I'm sure you're not going to forget, for example, uh, what is that? For, 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 for yes, aspirin or but I don't. Or for special for example. Yeah, or if you have you have a cold, whatever you know, things which are common. So you don't forget those kinds of words. Okay. Also for like uh, yeah, specialists in medicine because they they have like uh, frequency. It's called, yeah, it's idea of frequency. Okay. So this is one of the features of these kinds of errors that happen. Thoughts reflect contemporary failures, your uh, Zakaria's uh, remark. Temporary failures of phonological activation rather than some other aspects of the production uh, process. It is temporary, okay, and it is relevant to the phonological activation. Okay, you know, as we explained. 